welcome back to this week's episode of Doc Talk. So uh, I'm Dr. I'm here with all my usual suspects, Dr. Regina Parnell, coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri, Dr. Jason Lester from Aurora, Colorado, Dr. Ma Major Doctor, sorry, Michelle Greenwich, coming at us from my undisclosed government location, and Dr. Krista DeBerry coming to us from Memphis, Tennessee. And we got two new faces in our clubhouse tonight, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. First off, let's go with Dr. Kirk Lee, who's with us, if you want to go ahead and tell the people all about yourself. Well, hello, people. Uh, my name is Dr. <laughs> I reside in Garland, Texas, in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Uh, I am the Dean of Student Enrollment Services at a district community college here. Um, and I've actually just been here a couple months, uh, just moved here from Boston, or back from Boston, I should say. Um, and glad to be back down south where people have manners and know how to talk to each other. Um, so I miss my good people in the south, and so it's good to be all these melanin faces all over the place. Um, and I look forward to participating. Um, thank you so much for being here. For those of you who don't know, Kirk is, I've known Kirk now for 20 years almost, which is what we just determined right before this. I was like, 18 years is a long time to know somebody. I'm just saying. But I'm so happy that he's here with us today. And we have Dr. Princess with us. Dr. Princess, tell the people about yourself. Where are you coming to us from? I'm from Chicago, Illinois, originally from Detroit, Michigan. And um, I am currently a director of curriculum and education at a medical school in Chicago and the managing partner of Current Solutions, as well as co-founder of Success CX, which is a mentorship and career development app for aspiring Black physicians. Awesome. Uh, Y'all, again, I just want to say I'm so happy to see all this melanin here. Like, I'm just, it's doing something real special for me. All this, all this free melanin. This is not a prison documentary or nothing. And all of us are here and we are all free. I just like that. I love everything about it. Uh, today, our topic is the importance of mentorship for Blacks in education. Um, you know, um, a, a lot of us are first generation uh, college graduates, first generation college students, are the first doctor in our family, what have you. And I really felt like this was a great topic to discuss in terms of um, maybe what are some advantages of mentorship in education, especially for Black students, and what purpose a mentor serves. So having our two awesome guests here, I'm going to open the floor up to them uh, with that question. What are some advantages of mentorship in education, especially as it pertains to Black students? Well, in, in medicine, we see the impact of the lack of mentorship in medicine every day with the COVID-19. Uh, we see the health disparities that exist with African-American patients. Um, we know that if a person has a strong physician home and a relationship with a doctor, they have improved health outcomes. So when we look at the overall pipeline for physicians, particularly African-American physicians, the pipeline is leaky. And it's leaky because you have a generations of government policy, structural racism that precluded African-Americans to participate in the medicine or in mobility activities uh, up until 1966. We're prohibited from being into, um, going into medicine and only able to be admitted into two medical schools across the country. And right now, if we had uh, one physician for every 450 Black patients, we were able to achieve healthcare, healthcare um, parity. So, the impact is being able to navigate the space, balance home life and real life um, with the, your studies, being able to navigate the stress of medical school. Physicians in medical school is stressful for everybody. And most people who enter medical school are fifth or sixth generation physicians. So they have someone to tap into when they're trying to understand something. But with African-Americans, since we um, are new to the enterprise, we don't have that social capital to be able to tap into. Um, the, 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 the group of folks who have access to is very small. So we need to have more mentors, people who have recently graduated or practicing physicians, being able to give um, that insight on how to navigate that space successfully, because medicine has its own culture, its own, um, own language. And, and how do you do that as a tap into the folks who are uh, above you to be able to navigate and, and to level up? Um, and to kind of 
take a, a, a page out of Dr. Kearns' book. Um, if you think about education, um, and just I've not never heard anyone speak about you know medical school and that part of it. I've always worked in undergrad, and so the the mentoring that I've seen and the, that's necessary um, really scales up to medical school. And I've just never thought about it as it what it means going past graduate school because my work is always focused on keeping folks keeping black students specifically in undergrad mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Place to think about medical school or grad school so um and it, it's interesting like just my mind is a little blown because it's never took it that far because i've been so focused on creating the path of, of success for undergrad to just get past the first year of college mm -hmm. let alone a master or a doctor so um just you know, these things keep happening and growing in your mind. Mm -hmm. um, but mentoring is important. Um, a lot of the research out there just shows that, you know, Black students and students of color, just, we don't do as well in undergrad. And it's, uh, actually, I'm not going to, I'm going to retract it. We don't continue in undergrad. We do as well. Um, the data shows that we perform similarly, but we, we face a lot of challenges, particularly those of us who are first gen um, or, or low income or both. Um, and sometimes even second generation college mm -hmm. people um, struggle just as much as first gen. So the, the importance of mentoring is, is, is phenomenal. The, the documentation is there. Um, students who go to college and make connections with people and with the institution are retained at a higher rate. Students who go and connect with a, in a formal capacity with um, either peer mentors or professional mentors are that much more likely to continue and be successful. Um, and to be quite honest, I, I don't, I can't think of a, a student of color who has not been mentored in some capacity um, through their undergraduate career. It's very rare. Um, whether it was, um, you know, sometimes it's a secretary or something, there's always somebody who has grabbed a student and, and kind of pulled them through. Um, my doctoral research, one of the components, I focus on retention as well in that. Um, one of the key components was every student that I met with, that I interviewed, had a person that they could identify at their institution who kind of grabbed their hand and said, come on, baby, we're we going to get through this. So we can't succeed without mentoring, to be quite honest, the mm -hmm. long and the short. Okay. I mean, I, I, can, I can't really speak for everybody else and how their college experience went. I know for me, Honestly, starting in high school, it, the representation factor is huge. And so when I think of mentoring, I just think the, the representation angle, just to see someone who is in the space that you will eventually sit in. I had never considered social work. I would never considered counseling, anything like that as a career path. Um, and I met uh, Ms. Sephora who's now Dr. Fisher, uh, at that time. And at the same time, I had Kirk, who I could at least look at and go, okay, well, he's getting a master's. Now, I think, if I'm not mistaken, every all your, your educational stuff came around education and that kind of thing. Um, now, I always knew teaching, education stuff wasn't going to be for me. That was it, the end and good night. But it was still something to see you know, people of color who are getting masters and going to do different things, it was very eye-opening that, hey, we can do this. You know, this can, this is a, a possibility. Because um, a lot of times, you know, in my hometown, if you got a bachelor's, that was life. I mean, you were good. You were G to G. You don't need to go any further. Um, but it's very different when you're seeing uh, African-Americans who keep going in their educational pursuits. So let me ask for every, I mean, I guess my regular usual suspects, for you guys, what purpose do you see a mentor serving? I chime in first. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't think that the whole Dr. Jason Lester thing uh, would even be a reality if I did not have any mentors. And I, I would probably bet to say that uh, everyone on this forum could probably have that same entrance. Um, but for me, uh, is 100% necessary. And I, I mean, I remember having a 1.67 grade point average. And the only thing that I had was that trombone. And my mentor at the time was uh, Mr. DeQueer, that is now Dr. DeQueer. Uh, and, you know, he was like, 
<laughs> he used to always curse. I won't say the things that he used to say, but I will say that he was very motivating. Uh, and he um, <laughs> he basically, <laughs> you know, he sent that elevator back down for me. And I think that for those of us that have the opportunities and the privilege to be uh, where we are, you know, it's important that we send that elevator back down to, you know, bring back up that next person that's going to continue the legacy uh, of what it is that they're trying to achieve. Um, and I guess the last thing I want to say uh, right now is people are not aware of what they are capable of. Um, you know, I think we have an idea. I think that we, we we may kind of wonder, but it really takes that mentor to come in and say, wow, I read your paper and I, I'm just blown away with how you're able to conceptualize this. I said to a student uh, Friday, and she was just like, wow, you're okay, cool. I was like, man, you need, you, you're, you're on to something. And just to see the effect that it has on the students and then the effect that it has on friends and, and, and mentees is powerful. Um, so I just, I want to encourage everybody, if you don't have a mentor, you need to get one. Yeah, and I'll um, go ahead and add that um, not only is it important, but I believe mentorship is important at all levels. Um, so it can start even before uh, college. And that impact that a person has early on in life is so important. And I remember one of my, my first grade teacher, I remember that lady to this day. <laughs> and if it wasn't for her, I don't even think that I would have even thought about going to college in the first place. And so I think it's important that um, people understand that mentorship at different levels is just as important as mentorship in college. Because as we progress in education, obviously, um, well, based on what I've seen, there's less and less uh, people of color, right? And so feeling somewhat isolated, um, I've heard of that. Uh, I've worked with college students before. And then as well as myself, um, being the only person uh, um, that is a person of color is really important that even if you uh, don't just kind of see a person, a teacher or an administrator that doesn't quite um, look like you can walk up to them and, and be um, and ask for their mentorship, keep looking around. You will find someone, even if it isn't in the department that you're uh, attending school in. It's a mentor just to kind of help you through is very, very important. So Dr. Lester brought up a good point in that I honestly feel like um, I did not have a mentor, but I've had a lot of different professional women who could offer me different perspectives to help me throughout my educational process. Um, so for example, undergrad, it was Dr. Kumawa. And I remember, you know, sitting in her psychology class in this big auditorium, I'm like, man, I need to connect with her, right? And so like still to this day, I know I can email her and I can call her, you know, and get her perspective obtaining my master's. Dr. Lee brought up a good point in that they may not always um, have the same level of education as you do, but Miss Gertha Alexander, when I was getting my master's, she was like the administrator for all of us. If anything went wrong, you went to Miss Gertha's office. And I remember one day, because I started my master's when uh, my second baby was three weeks old, and right at the end of the semester, I said, that's it, I'm quitting. I need to stay at home with my babies. Like, this is too much. And she said, okay. She said, come in the office. And she, it was really a setup. She, I came into the office and she said, okay, this is what I'm going to enroll you in. She said, you're going to be the minority representative for the SGA. And then you're going to do X, Y, Z. And she was like, you do not understand. She said it was over 200 some applicants. 25 people were selected. She said, no, you're going to stay in this program. And so, you know, I was like, I just had to suck it up. And I was like, I guess I'm staying in the program. I'll see you in January, right? Um, it's just all those different um, women along my journey throughout my educational process that have added value. Now, me being a field instructor, um, having two organizations and opening those organizations, um, those spaces up for social workers, criminal justice majors, psychology students, Oh my goodness, I've had a lot of different disciplines, even marketing and business. Um, intern for one of my agencies. And a lot of times they will say, you know what, in my past internships, I did not work with the, the owner or the, the founder of the organization directly. 
you know, and I see why it may not be given the title of mentor or mentorship. Just offering that space to students um, to learn. You know, a lot of times people think interns um, and they're just running the business. No, as a field instructor, as an intern um, director, that's a hard role to fulfill because students come with some issues, right? Just, ima just imagine what we were all going through. So literally, it's not just field instructor, but also mentor um, and just helping them throughout the semester. All right, so let me read your paper. I've been reading many of papers for my students. Okay, well, which, which classes do you think? Now I'm the advisor, like, you know, just so many different perspectives. So it is very important for someone to find a mentor. Um, I feel like it's also just important for people to be a mentor, especially if you see someone that needs guidance and is willing to um, be receptive to your feedback. Yeah, and I would add, which I agree with what everybody has said, um, you know, having that mentor, especially in undergrad, but like uh, Dr. Michelle said, you know, sometimes it starts before you even get to college. I remember my fifth grade teacher, Ruby Johnson, I'm going to say her name, Todd God. She inspired me to want to do something beyond high school in fifth grade. She wore these letters across her chest and she was so warming. I'm like, Miss Johnson, what that mean? She was like, baby, when you get to college, you're going to be one too. Guarantee you me, I'm one where she is just Sigma Theta toward the incorporated. Holla! But to say it's not only about having mentors, it's about building friendships within places. I would not have gotten through my doctoral degree without some of you on this panel. I would not have gotten through my first graduate degree without a core cord of friends and support system that we encourage each other when I felt like I didn't understand they was, had more confidence in me than I had in myself. So just having that that entourage to help you get through your situations because like most of you, I'm the first. I'm the first to graduate from college, from graduate. And who thought my grandmother would ever have a child grandchild to graduate from with a doctoral degree. So I am the first. So I would not have made it without a solid foundation of friends and friendships that I have in you. So building, I would tell anyone that's seeking that education, that next step, once you get in, seek solid friendships, people that's going to support you, kick you, and laugh with you throughout that time. Because without that, it, it will be hard. How would it say? I'm sorry. Thinking no, back on what Dr. Parnell and Dr. Lee had said earlier, I think it's so and so powerful is really having that network of people. And one of the things that a mentor does is give folks a sense of belonging and to help them identify their own talents. I mean, I have advised students throughout the pipeline, all the way from kindergarten to practicing physicians. And the 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 difference sometimes is that what's unique for African Americans in the pipeline, regardless of what industry they're going in, is sometimes the environment itself is not ready for us. And because of that, then there's some unique challenges for African Americans. Everybody needs a mentor. Everybody fill in the blank, from the affluent male uh, white student to you know a person in any, any other domination, fill in the blank. The difference, and particularly in our U.S., is that we have unique challenges because of the system that we're in oftentimes challenge our position, challenges our place. And because it challenges our place, it kind of sometimes it can shake our confidence. Like, am I really able to do this? Is it, do I really have what it takes? And it takes those people to say, yes, you do. You do have it. You have these unique talents. Not only do you have these talents because you are you, but because of the experiences, being a first generation means not just that you don't have something. It means you have the ability to adapt. That means you have the ability to navigate different terrains. That means you understand different languages and different people because being a first generation, you had to figure it out. You had to hustle. And that is a talent that can transfer to many different industries an asset to their ability to be able to perform. Because too many times we are told that we are a deficit in something. I'm a first generation college student. My mom graduated from high school and I graduated from high school. And to be able to say, 
And also mentorship starts at home. People being able to have faith in you. Like she didn't have a high school diploma, but you know, it was not gonna, I wasn't gonna do anything but go to school. Okay. <laughs> and how do we as as people who have the opportunity to advance can reach back and give that that bolster, that that support to people who are shaky, who have the talent and to make significant change. And I think that's why, you know, being a mentor is so important. And like um, Dr. Michelle said, on um, all levels of the pipeline, because at all levels, we're challenged. And so we have to be able to have that network of people to say, no, no, I've been there. You can do it. I did too. And you, and that's how people get that support and that confidence to know that they really can make a difference and, and, and do what their goals are setting for. I just wanted to add, um, Dr. DeBerry brought up a very good point, and I think I shared this with Jamal um, when we were talking about uh, me participating today. I got through most of my career, most of my schooling without a formal mentor. Um, and, and I, I gave that some thought and, you know, and, and really, since we talked, just delve into that and came up with some things. Um, while I didn't have a formal mentor, mentoring was happening um, throughout the course of my life. Um, recently, my mother's best friend passed, um, and her name was Harvey Ann. And so Harvey Ann worked at a bank. Um, and so when I was in middle school, I would ride the city bus downtown, and I would go visit her office, and I would be buzzed up to the like ninth floor and go to security. And here I am, this little black boy from the hood, <laughs> wandering through a bank. And you know, you don't think of that as a formal mentoring experience, but like here is someone who put a 11 year old child in a bank, like like in behind the scenes. And I got to see this woman that I knew personally in, in you know my everyday life, who was this ball of joy and big mouth and just loud, like at work in a, you know, suit and, and rang in. And so it kind of taught me, that was my first experience with like, there are two, you have two selves. Um, and I think for a lot of us, particularly first generation students, we have to come to terms with the fact that there are two selves. And then for a lot of us, we can merge those selves and, you know, be that full being at some point. But you live two lives for a long time um, as a first generation student. Um, and so as, I wanted to go back and just touch on that point to say that, you know, we have those informal mentors, but I also want to touch on the networking piece because that is something that I didn't even start realizing I needed or lacked until I was like 38. Like I'd gotten through some significant progress in my career, um, without networking. Like, you know, I just kind of, I was not fumbled in things, but you know, I'm, I'm, smart guy made it through. And so for a lot of us, that happened. Um, but I think the thing that I regret is I didn't have a formal mentor to introduce me into networks, into certain settings, into certain groups of people. Um, I didn't join a fraternity, so I didn't have that networking thing. So I, I did a lot of it on my own. I think a lot of people do, but there's still a lot of that informal mentoring that happens. And so I think we just have to give some credit there. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to add to that piece is I think we as successful professionals have to reach back. Um, while I, I do have a, two formal mentors, um, there are a lot of people that I do the, come on, baby, let's take my hand and, and come with me and let me walk you through some of these processes. Um, and, and that's one of the beauties of working in education on the college campuses. There's a lot of opportunities for me to do that. Um, and I've been in a lot of places where I was the only one. And I see a lot of my students who are looking for others. Um, and you know, just informally saying, come on, let's, we, let's have this conversation. Let me tell you why this didn't work for you and how you need to fix that moving forward um, and those kinds of conversations. So I just wanted to add that Dr. Mayor made me think of that piece. I want to share it. I don't believe that uh, Dr. Lee is over the age of 38. There's no way in the world, sir. I, you know, you got a good dermatologist or something, but you look way younger. Uh, and you look good in blue. I just want to point that out there. Okay, going on with my point here. Um, <laughs> growing up, we had um, the different world. We had the Cosby show. We had all of these shows where, you know, if you were in a, a single uh, parent family for whatever reason, you could sometimes you just come on, turn on TV and you would see these positive images. 
of, of black people just doing some phenomenal things. And your mind would get to wonder, you'd be like, well, dang, I wonder, can I, can I pull that off? And I don't, I'm not aware of what the teenagers experiences are now. Uh, but I don't know that they can turn on television and see, you know, just a group of, uh, of black students uh, on a television show and just, you know, the normal socialization that happens on a college campus. So, I mean, in some ways, you know, for me, you know, I've had these people that I've been attached to, but, you know, there's been an informal uh, mentorship that's happened through the socialization that I got from television and just watching a different world or just, you know, seeing um, we had, um, we had, there was a Sigma uh, teacher uh, that, at my school. And, you know, I was just like, well, dang, you know, I, I didn't know what that big E on his arm was, but it looked cool. It was a Sigma sign. But I was just like, wow, you know, these people are living life and I want to be like them. And for us, I think that even being on this forum or trying to, our day to day stations, I mean, I ho I'm hoping that somebody that's watching, you know, it's like, well, dang, man, you know, I want to go and I want to do blank. And hopefully they're motivated to know that they can achieve it and they can achieve it, you know, definitely on their own, but they'll achieve it uh, in, in, even more effectively with a mentor. Yeah. And um, I'm sorry, Jamal, are you trying to talk? You go, you go, go. Okay. You gotta... <laughs> okay. Um, I also want to point out um, one of the main reasons why mentorship is so important, especially for students of color, is because oftentimes as you continue to progress, you find yourself feeling pressured, right? And you really need that mentorship as well as like the friendships and, and things of that nature just to kind of help you through because oftentimes it's like, okay, we've already started on this path and I'm now my family is looking at me to keep going. Now my family is looking at me to to, to be that first, you know what I mean? So I can complete this. But we all know that education is somewhat difficult, especially because we're moving out, we're on our own, we're having to figure out life, and we're having to fi figure out how to get through school as well. And so I think it's important to have a mentorship, whether that be in your friends or in the school administration at all, um, that you have somebody that you can bounce ideas off of on how you can make it through and not, and feel less pressure. Because when, when, when we get into school, at some point we figure out why we're there and what we want to do with our lives, right? And that mentor can help you get through those points. So I just wanted to make that point, um, Dr. Jamal. Oh no, you know, it's all good. You know, this is, we were just talking, we chat. But I was just gonna say, um, don't forget that, you know, and I wanna say this for everybody watching, like family are your first mentors always. Um, you know, these are the people, regardless of education level, that really put into you that you can be whatever you wanna be. I'm so grateful for all of my family because as a kid, I wanted to be everything from a Power Ranger to a doctor, to just all kind of randomness. But even when I went to him and said, look, I want to be a snake wrangler, what nobody ever did was say, you can't do that. They all said, now, a lot of times, I think they were just kind of dismissing me on the cool and being like, yeah, baby, that's nice. But what they never said was, you can't do this. They left that door open. So it's like, whatever you want to be, you can do it. And when we believe in you, and it's like that idea of, we're believing in whatever you think you want to do. And so when your kids come up to you and tell you that they want to be a doctor or a gymnast or an astronaut or whatever, even if it's something that you're not familiar with or something that you have any interest in or whatever, don't quell that in them. Allow them to keep dreaming because they may be that person who cures COVID because I feel like we ain't going to never get a cure for this at the rate we're going. Maybe your child going to be the one to get it. Maybe they're going to figure it out. So I just feel like, you know, definitely don't be afraid to be that mentor for your child. Hopefully as a parent, you are that already. Um, you know, if it's not showing them what to do, it's just showing them how to be a good person or how to be a responsible person. Like show them those things. It does really matter. Dr. Ma, that that's such a, a good point. And, and I think even as I progress, I realize that I'm still learning how to leverage my network. You know, because I think that's a skill like you, you know, you are you you build this reputation, this relationships. And as um, Dr. Edgar said earlier, that when you are you navigate up, you get a certain sort of level in your career. And 
then you you have you have this reputation, but you don't know how to take yourself to the next step. And then you're looking at how do you do that? And oftentimes, because we're a first generation college student, that skill set on how to tap into your network, how to ask for help, how to because sometimes you know as a first generation college student, you know we're oftentimes the person who's given help, right? And the skill set of receiving help is one that sometimes we have to learn and sometimes the hard way as we progress because we're trying to figure it out. And to be able to leverage that network and ask for help and ask for advice or, you know, um, ask for a role or ask for a position or ask for what you're worth, right, is oftentimes something that we get, we have to learn. And, and when a, a mentor, though, can help you figure that out faster, it's not saying that you are not able to figure it out, but they they can help you navigate and jump over those potholes, so you don't have to 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 get yourself in a situation that is unnecessary because they have already done it. They can show you, hey, you don't have to do that. You can do this over here, and and that also gives you some confidence because you have a roadmap. You know, oh, and sometimes you can create your own path then because. That person already done this, you can learn from them. And I think, you know, we're always at every phase of our career, you know, uh, needing to leverage that and oftentimes tap into our network of people. And sometimes that's friends, sometimes that's people who, you know, you see in like one of the things that I'm I'm doing right now in my own self is that I'm trying to say where I want to go and who is that person? We reach out to them. I don't know them, but reach out to them because they're where I want to be, right? And, and not feeling afraid to, and get out of our comfort zone to kind of talk and tap it and create a new network for yourself. Because even if you don't have anybody in your family or in your life who's doing the things that you want to do, because we have the internet available to us now and we didn't have it when all of us were younger, we have the opportunity to find people and connect with people that we didn't have before. And so we need to tap into that and encourage our young people to do that too, to use the internet also to expand the network beyond just the social or the personal or, or the fun, but how they can help some, them grow you know, personally um, to find a mentor. Now, Dr. Princess, I just want to point out, I had the internet when I was growing up. It might've been dial up, but I had it. Don't be angry. <laughs> Let me dig me like that. It ain't that bad. I mean, all of us had the dial up. I'm talking about the high, this high speed stuff. You know, we didn't, we didn't have no Snapchat and Instagram and all this now. <laughs> well, some, 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 some of us didn't stop. Um, you know, some of us outdated. <laughs> <laughs> Let me claim my age. <laughs> we got some youngins up in here, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have the, the, the internet. But I just, I, I want to agree that, you know, family is the first mentor. And you have to make your your children and your, your just your family around you feel just as important to let them know, hey, I did it. You can, too, and let me be your first mentor. Uh, a lot of my little cousins, y'all yeah, know I'm an only child, so I, I, uh, my cousins are my siblings, and it's 49 of us. They often reach out to me, and neither one of them can ever say, well, Gina didn't reply back to me, because anytime they need me, I try to make myself available, because, you know, I am the uh, only my grandbaby calling my phone. Let me decline her call. Um, she gonna be upset. So y'all, y'all gonna see my me punching this phone a couple times. She gonna keep calling. <laughs> but you have to, you have to make yourself available. Like she know I'm usually available for her on Sundays at certain times. So she, you know, if you can't be available to mentor your own, who will? You have to be that first mentor. I want to speak to the flip side of that though, because you know. That's great, but for some people, the, their families aren't going to be their mentors. Their family aren't those supportive people. So I want to say to those people, reach outside of your family if you have to. There are people like us who will be there to answer your call and to help you along that path because everybody's family isn't great and isn't you know, supportive in that way or have to be very strong about what you should be doing as opposed to supporting you in the things that you want to do. So yeah. find it's out there. Talk to people. Um, I think Dr. Kearns is right. Find that person who's doing the thing you want to do and reach out. It may be a cold call, but most people will be receptive to that. And if they're not, they'll tell you and they'll probably give you a referral to somebody who is. So if your family is not the support that you need, it's still out there. And I, yeah. 
And sometimes you just got to dig. That's the least. Sometimes you got to dig deep in the family to find yeah. somebody in the family. <laughs> so find the and doctor. I do a lot. <laughs> um, one thing I will say, you know, speaking to the Instagram, the Snapchats, and all of that, don't be afraid to reach out to people on Instagram or our social media. I've had fraternity brothers who are fairly new who just come through who will reach out on Instagram and say, hey, can I ask you some questions? Can I talk to you about this? I've had people who are not fraternity related just reach out and say, hey, I have a question. Is it okay if, you know, can, can you know, we talk about something? And I mean, for most people, it's okay. I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm honestly flattered because I'm like, you want to talk to me? I got something. And who that's nice. And I got to build no insurance after we talk. That's that's real nice. That's awesome. You know, I, I think it's 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 cool that we have all of these ways to connect with people nowadays. So if, when we're talking about finding a mentor and finding someone that you want to do, yeah, if I write Oprah right now, she may not respond to me. It's okay. You know, maybe I need to go the next level beneath Oprah. Let me find our production assistant. Maybe they can answer a question or two. You know, that's the thing. It's like, don't be afraid to ask those questions. I will say because you, it's not necessarily that you have to call somebody. You can just shoot them a message now. And if they don't answer, it's nothing to be heartbroken over. It's like, okay, they just didn't answer. No big, you know, next person, move along. But I definitely say, fine, man, find somebody who you can talk to who can, who can answer those questions that you may have. Um, let me ask you all a question. Now, we've been really focused a lot on people of color, but let me ask you guys, do you think cross-racial mentorship can that be advantageous to 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 us as students? Definitely, I think if if you have people have similar experiences, um, if they had um, if they're in a particular profession that you um, navigate to, there isn't. I think people think that you have to have one mentor that's put to serve all your needs, but you have mentors that have different functions for you. You know, you may have a mentor who's very charismatic and that's a skill that you want to learn. So they may be in a completely different industry, completely different walk of life, but you want, you're learning from them how to do that. Or you may have a mentor who's really good at research and you have no experience at mess research or you found somebody who was a researcher and you want to figure out how to do that. You're tapping into them that way. Or you have somebody who may be politically connected or who can really, you know, uh, talk to people and get them to energize like our, our fellow Dr. Lester here. You may say, well, let me tap in and talk to Dr. Lester to figure out how did he was able to get more political support? How does he do that? So I think that you don't have to have one person that does everything. The beauty of it is find your collection. Like sometimes I tell my students, find your own personal board of directors who you're going to get to to, to really help push you and navigate you forward, it's going to be a collection of people to do that. And if you know or are trying to figure out where you want to go, you identify things that you want to be able to do and you tap into those people, but not just one person um, is going to have all the skills that you want to be able to obtain. One, one of the, the greatest mentors that I've had in life, his name is Jeff Holliday. And I mean, I don't think that he and I could be more opposite. If I'm short and black, he's tall and white. And we just, you know, every, when, when I got to do my internship to get my MSW, he and I would get together every Wednesday. And I just always remember preparing because he'd always ask me these questions. And he was just so interested in what it is that I was up to. At the time, he was this uh, deputy executive director. And at the time, I was just a supervisor. In a position that came open at the state, and you know, I, it was a long shot, <laughs> like long shot. And um, because of like my mentorship that I was getting from him, I was like, "Well, shoot, I'm gonna apply for this." Sure enough, I applied, and I think that he knew it was a long shot too. And he was like, "Well, we need to prepare," uh, <laughs> and went in the interview and killed it. And I think that if I would not have allowed myself to be um, uh, be be able to be mentored by someone that didn't look like me or someone from a different background, I'd probably be still sitting in that same desk that I was sitting in. Um, so, you know, uh, and a special shout out to the people that don't look like us that are willing to be mentors because I learned a whole different game 
uh, that I probably hadn't learned, had, would not have learned if I would not have been with Jeff. And, um, you know, Dr. Uh, Fortney, you were always talking about Oprah. And I found the cutest quote from Oprah with regard to mentorship. I'm going to read it. it. Oprah said, a mentor is someone who allows you to see the hope inside yourself. And I think that, you know, when I sit back and think about the mentors that I've had down through the years, they saw something in me that I did not see in myself. And when I listened to Dr. Parnell and she's talking about how rough it was for us to get through this program that we just got through, you know, she doesn't know it, but she's a mentor to me. She called and always asked and see what's going on. Hey, how are you doing? You didn't look like yourself in class. What's up? Can you listen to this presentation? You have to have those people that push you. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for it. So we're going to start to kind of wrap up our, our mentorship discussion. Uh, I'll give the usual suspects an opportunity to uh, give their final thoughts, and then we'll save the, the, the main event for our, our guests. Uh, so uh, whoever wants to start can start. Uh, y'all do y'all thing. Get off the mute buttons. I'm just saying. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> now off the mute button. Um, so it's important to have a mentor. Um, doesn't matter what their background is. Doesn't matter if their education level is not the same as yours. Doesn't matter if they're, you know, black or, you know, of a different race. At the end of the day, the important thing is that you need someone that you can talk to to help you get through uh, your education and figure out what way to go. So, and, and you can reach out any way, shape or form. You can even reach out to one of us. Um, I just threw all y'all out there like that, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm sure you all agree. Uh, so just reach out to somebody. If it's not within your family and your education, someone on social media, like one of us would be more than happy to help. Yes, I, I will. I'll raise my hand. Between the internships and supervising social workers um, to obtain the LCSW, um, I'm already playing that role. So if anyone reaches out, I will respond. Um, final thoughts in that, again, a mentor does not mean just one single person. It could be a group or a collection of people um, for just different areas and moments of your life. Like Dr. Purnell said, just completing our doctoral degree. Yes, all of you have reached out in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Hey, what you think about this? Or hey, um, because you definitely have to have, you know, they say it takes a village to raise a child. And the thing is, is that child needs that village forever. Um, and just to add different people in, you know, again, depending on what part of life or what stage of life that they're in. So if at all possible, please find some type of mentor. What I want to say is um, everybody come to your football game and come to see you win. And, you know, you have to be sure you have the right uh, mentor because, you know, it, if you hook up with the wrong person, it, you could go down a different street and miss the house that you're supposed to get to. And I think that it's important that everybody here and those of you that are listening, uh, that you figure out what role is it that you're playing and being a mentor to somebody. And, you know, and then like Oprah said, you know, you will help them find the hope that is within themselves. And yeah, that's, that's what I got to say. Just to, um, that's the key, help somebody find that hope. We all have that life. And I would go back to Ella Baker. Y'all know I'm, I'm strong on my, my black women leaders from, from, from the past. Give someone a life and they will find their way. It's a quote from Ella Baker. Just give them that light. Give them that hope. Be that switch for them. Sometimes it's standing in a grocery store holding a conversation, just motivating, encouraging someone. Like Dr. DeBerry said, it's for that moment and that moment only. My kids get frustrated with me because I stand in places and I talk and I don't care who it is. And they don't have to look like me for me to hold a conversation and motivate someone. And I always leave them saying, be blessed. Be blessed in whatever journey you take and have hope. And if you need to reach out to anyone, feel free to reach out to us. You might not find me anywhere but LinkedIn 
but reach out to me if you need me. Um, and that's all I have. I think um, what I want to leave folks with um, is obviously mentorship is important. Um, and I think that we have to think of mentorship as a cycle. Um, and it's an ongoing cycle. So you should be mentoring while you're also being mentored. Um, we always talk about education. You never stop learning. And so if, you're never, if you never stop learning, that means you're always growing. Something is always happening to you. So that means there's always somebody out there who knows something you don't know. And I'm, I'm a person who personally believes I'm, I want to learn from other people's mistakes so that I don't make them. That has been the, the journey in my life has been I'm watching what people are doing and I'm trying not to make those same mistakes. Mentorship is that watching. It is the literal manifestation of that watching. Um, you are talking and interacting with people who've done these things who can give you insight into the decisions they made, whether they were good or bad, and how it worked out for them. And that can save you a lot of heartache um, and pain, honestly, in, in moving forward. It can also speed up the process of you going forward. So get you a mentor. Get you several mentors. Um, and remember to reach back and bring people with you. That's a part of mentoring. So whether you do it formally or informally, get you a mentor, be a mentor. And I would um, echo everything that my colleague said today, but also add that mentorship is kind of the basic human experience. And it's, you had to, someone mentored us to talk, someone mentored us to walk, someone showed us how to do each step. And in the higher education or in our journey path to um, uh, another career, it's similar. Something a mentor said to me, and I call her that, even though we haven't had a formal program, she always would say to me, nothing beats a no but an ask. And if you remember that nothing beats a no but an ask, and I also add something to it that never take no for an answer. So when someone says no, then you find somebody else to say yes. And so you, you have what it takes and the idea that if you as of someone else mentoring them can uncover it for you. Um, and then you can also be able to find somebody can, to help you, as Dr. Parnell said, be the light. And so know that, you know, that, yep, that your person is out there and the way you find them is to look. And one, to guarantee that you're not going to find them is to not. So the goal is for us to actually seek out, get out our comfort, comfort zone. And there are people out there waiting to be your mentor. And so you want to seize the opportunity to find them. And so we are definitely here for you, as everyone said, and that you have what it takes, and we want to help you find it. So, y'all, it's, it's been an awesome experience getting to chat with our, with our folks today. And I want to thank our guests to the clubhouse, Dr. Lee and Dr. Kearns. Yay. Thank y'all for being here with us. And uh, y'all, we're going to be back next week. Uh, Man, it's like it feels like you know we haven't done 14 episodes already. But how awesome is this? I'm so happy to have everybody here. And uh yeah, y'all see us see us next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. All right, have a good one.